24, 14. So we're going to tie all this together. We read Acts 1, 8, but we are to be witnesses. But then in Matthew 24, 14, uh, there's a reference to our testimony. Specifically, us being a witness. <coughs> Kingdom shall be preached in all the world, in all the world for, a witness for a witness unto all nations. To all nations. And then shall the end come. The end will come. Can you read that again for me? Does everybody have that 2414? Yeah. Alright, it's on the screen for you too. Uh, but go ahead and read that for me again, Brandon. And this gospel this gospel of the kingdom of the kingdom shall be preached. Shall be preached. In all the world, for a witness, for a witness unto all nations, unto all nations, and then shall, and then shall, shall the end, the end come. come. In other words, <clears throat> our witness, our testimony is preparing for Christ's return. Hallelujah. And here's 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 what challenges me. This is what bothers me. We've lost focus of our assignment. Yeah. 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 We're doing everything for being a witness. Right. We're doing everything for sharing our testimony. Right. We're doing everything for doing the work we've been called to do. Yeah. And while Jesus is preparing to come back, the question is, are we saying anything about it? Watch this. Just like the Chinese farmer, all you gotta do is tell your story. Somebody needs to know about the God that you serve. Somebody needs to know what the Lord has done for you. By the show of hands, does anybody in this room have a testimony? Y'all fool. No, we ask that question again. Does anybody in this room have a testimony? Is anybody ashamed about what the Lord did for you? No. So we are responsible to tell somebody <laughs> what the Lord just did for you. What the Lord just did for you. And the Lord miraculously allowed you to walk into a position you didn't deserve. Don't you go in with your high pious self and say, based on my resume. No. The Lord made a way somehow. You see, if we try to make things more complicated than they need to be. Sometimes all people need to know is if I need a job, I can depend on the Lord to bring me a job. Let me move on. Be a witness. We need to be a witness. Look at look at the look at the scripture. You will receive power. Now understand the text. Jesus is challenging his disciples concerning the ministry on which they're about to embark. Uh, but he says to them, I need for you to go sit down somewhere and be still. Don't move. Don't walk in your assignment until you receive power. The Holy Ghost is going to come on you and you will be my witnesses. Can I pause right there for a minute? If you aspire to be anything in the church, if you aspire to be anyone with the title, everybody should carry the title of a witness. It doesn't matter if you're a bishop, you ought to be a witness. If you want to be an apostle, you hear what I said, want to be an apostle, they pop it up everywhere. You need to at least be a witness. If you're going to be a deacon, you need to at least be a witness. If you're going to sing in the choir, you ought to be at least a witness. If there's nothing else for you to do, Tell somebody to be a witness. Be a witness. You got to be a witness. Now, 
He said, you will receive power. We can't rush by that. You've got to understand the conversation. Jesus is, is getting ready to take flight. He's getting ready to ascend into heaven. He's getting ready to leave earth. He is sitting with his disciples. He's sitting with his boys. He's sitting down with those that followed him, walked with him, did, uh, sat at his feet, trying to understand information about the kingdom and the gospel. He's getting ready to leave, and he tells them, I'm getting ready to authorize you to do some work here on earth while I'm gone. I need you to get this. They're getting ready to be authorized, deputized, to walk in an assignment, walk in a and uh, an office walk in an area that they had not walked before. So he says to them, Jesus understanding, in order for you to walk this walk, i got to give you some help. Yeah. In order for you, because if you understand, if you understand it, uh, the disciples will then become apostles. He, he said, you will receive power. Jesus is deputizing his disciples for work that's before them. Uh, watch this. He sent them with instruction before their assignment. Right. Instruction is always given in preparation for the work that you have to do. You can't be called today and be out front tomorrow. Right. You can't be saved today and then necessarily be an expert right away. Can I tell you something that's a pillar? Everybody in this room, everybody online, me, myself included, all of us need to be instructed. All of us need to be taught. All of us need to sit down, be quiet, and hear what the Lord has to say to us. I don't care what your role is, what your assignment is, what your title is, what department you in, what ministry is, you need to hear from the Lord. Right. He said, I need for you, power's coming. So he gives them instructions to prepare them. He said, I need each of you to understand that I'm going to help you walk the assignment I've given you. Hallelujah. I need you to write that down. The Lord will always give you instruction. He will provide for you opportunity to hear from him before you walk in your assignment. That's why it's important that uh, when the Bible says, in all thy ways, acknowledge him, and he'll do what? He's going to give you instruction. When you hear from God, sometimes it's not prudent to get up and start running. You need to hear from him and understand what am I supposed to do with this? How am I supposed to handle this? Um, has anybody ever been blessed with a lump sum of money at one time? Yeah. Out the blue? Yeah. Recently? I would tell you, I did. I got real quiet. I'm not getting my business. I didn't tell you all that. <laughs> but has anybody been blessed with a love son or been blessed with the blessing that just came out of anywhere? Yes. Came out of nowhere. Did we ask God what we were supposed to do with it? No, that's a legit question. Here it is. In all our ways, acknowledge him. And he will direct you. He will instruct you. See, we're trying to make things deep. Like, uh, it got to be a crisis for us to sit down and hear from God. No, sometimes simplistic things, the Lord will lead and guide you in the right way. You'll walk into a blessing and you'll be in the way to tell you. Turn to somebody. But listen, when you get a lump sum of money or somebody blesses you with something out of the, out of the way, out of the norm, out of the blue, do you ask God how am I supposed to handle this? Tell the truth, you know. Somebody drop seven grand in your lap. I already speak your tongue. I receive it in Jesus' name. Let somebody drop ten grand in your lap. And say to you, no strings attached. I almost wanted to ask a question. Are we going to see you the next few Sundays? <laughs> but, but, but think about it. Think about, listen, if we're going to be a witness and we're going to make an impact, we just can't move any way we want to move. We just
just can't do what we want to do. Because you never know who's watching. You never know who's paying attention. You never know how people are watching to see how you handle, watch the situations that show up in your life. It might not be seven grand, but it might be a death in the family. It may not be money, but it may be a high-paying job, high-profile job. How are you going to handle that? Are you going to be stuck up and all of a sudden untouchable? <laughs> Last time I checked, it said, much is given, much is required. You know, when, when the Lord blesses you, you ought to expect some accountability to come with you. But they had to give instruction. Notice the first instruction given to them was to do nothing until you get the power. The anointing of the Holy Spirit. Watch this, which implies this. It takes more than your intellectual or physical properties to fulfill a complete and complete assignment. In other words, you cannot do this on your own. You cannot do this on your own. It doesn't matter how many degrees you have, what your IQ score is, what your ACT score was, your ACT score was. It doesn't matter your influence. If you're going to walk in kingdom assignment, you cannot depend on your flesh and your body to help you fulfill your assignment. Jesus was saying, I trained you. I spent time with you. If nobody else had a great mentor, the disciples had a great mentor, but even Jesus being a great mentor said, you can't do this unless you had a Holy Ghost. You're not, watch this. You can't effectively be a witness unless the Holy Ghost gives you some power. And it it is the power of the Holy Ghost. It's the anointing that will come from a source outside of yourself that will encourage you, prompt you, and direct you beyond any of your natural comfort zone. Can I tell you, there's some stuff that uh, the Lord allowed me to do that I never thought I could do. Y'all be honest. There are some things and some experiences that you have in your life that when you sat down and came off that high or you sobered up and you sat back and reflected, it was like, how in the world did that just happen? You mean to tell me that the Lord used me that way? Watch this. And I'm not necessarily talking about a preaching moment, but I'm talking about a moment I had a conversation with somebody and the word was revealed and helped somebody. And I looked back and said, wait a minute, uh, I'm surprised I even start talking about the word like that. I'm surprised I even start sharing my testimony. I told too much, but maybe I told enough. Because now they have a better understanding of who God is because somebody was being a witness. You know, you got some stuff you trying to take to the grave with you. Why don't y'all put y'all's head down? You know, we all got stuff that we trying to take to the grave. We might have told somebody, but it better go to their grave with them. But can I tell you that sometimes when the anointing falls on you, when God starts using you, He'll use everything about you to help somebody else. There was some stuff I thought I'd never tell you about. And then the Lord got me up here teaching, and all of a sudden, I'm spilling everything. But watch this. It wasn't for me to hold because somebody needed to know they could come for me. It was so much good. Somebody else on my way. Do me a favor. Just tap somebody telling me, you're for me, you can do it for you. You're for me, you can do it for your cousin. And you're for me, you can do it for your mom. It takes more. Think you have to complete your kingdom assignment. Listen, this creates, watch this, an inflow and outflow effect. This this, this, this creates an inflow and outflow effect. But it only happens because we cannot depend on ourselves. We cannot sustain ourselves. We cannot refresh ourselves. Y'all be honest, some stuff wears you out. I got 
any honest folk in here. Y'all forgive me, but church will wear you out sometimes. Being obedient will it will take you to your limits at times. It will, it will cause you to raise questions sometimes. Because how in the world, God, can you use me to encourage somebody that's hurt and I'm hurt myself? How can I stand before your people and preach a gospel, but I'm struggling in some own, in my own area? God, how can I be effective here, but not be effective over here? I can't do it on my own. True ministry will take place when the Holy Ghost takes over. And anointing starts to flow. I told you it creates an inflow and outflow. Here it is. Watch this. Uh, he said, I'm going to give you something so you can give something. Y'all missed that. He said, I'm going to give you something so you can give something. Some of y'all still didn't hear me. He was talking to his disciples and said, I'm going to give you something so that you can give something. You do understand that when we're used by God, we're simply conduits. We're being used by God. There's a constant flow between heaven through you to get to the people he's trying to reach. I said there's a constant flow from heaven through you to get to the people he's trying to reach. We become conduits or channels. Watch this. Not reservoirs or holding tanks. We're conduits. Conduit has a way in and a way out. There is a flow outside of you. You simply contain the flow so that way what is being moved will get to the place it's best to end up. Yeah. We're not reservoirs. Here it is. A flowing river, I need you to hear me. I need you to picture this. A flowing river, Sister Natalie kind of talked about it. A flowing river purifies itself. It's a body of water that has inlets but also has an outlet. A flowing river will naturally continue to flow. And that which goes through it comes in and goes out. But if you only have an inlet but no outlet, it's called a swamp. If there's no flow out, it creates an issue. We got an issue. God's pouring into us, and we're trying to hold him to everything he gives us. Here we are, sitting in the sanctuary, sitting in swamps. Because we don't want to share what God gave us. We don't want to be a witness. Some of y'all know y'all should be dead and in your grave. Somebody should be laying on their sick bed. Somebody should have lost their mind, literally lost their mind. And here it is, God brings you out, gets you off your back, heals your body, keeps you alive, continues to wake you up every morning, and you have the nerve not to tell anybody <laughs> what the Lord has done for you. Listen, if you don't have any conversation throughout the day, you ought to at least tell one person that the Lord did something for you. Oh, no, that's an assignment. That's a command. That ain't from me. That's from the Lord. You should at least tell somebody. Be a witness every day of the week. Not just on testimony service we have every few times in the year. A true testimony is not what you did, it's what the Lord did. Right. Yeah. Now, this, this is what amazed me because I never thought about it until I got into the text and I got into the study. But there's another example of a swamp that we're very familiar with, and it's called the Dead Sea. Yeah. There's an inlet, but there's no outlet. And according to uh, 
of nature. Life is only sustained feet or foot, whatever, from the intellect. Yards away from the intellect, things begin to die. They dry up and they have no place to go. The implication is if you hold on to it, the implication is that if you only hold on to it and not release it, you're creating an environment to pass away. Watch this. And you're only feet away from the source that gives life. Here you are in a dead situation and you're only a few feet away from the source that gives you life. But because you're not willing to open up on the back end and allow the Lord to flow through you, here you are. Remember she talked about debris starting to pile up and a cesspool beginning to flow or sit, become stagnant. Do you understand that stagnant water stinks? Yes. Yes. I don't know anybody who's willing to jump into the dead sea to take a swim. Now notice what Jesus says to the disciples. He said, you will receive power. Then he says, when the Holy Spirit comes on you. Notice what he said. He said, on you. Now, what do you mean? Because the Holy Spirit is already in you. But the kingdom assignment to operate in it, you got to have something on you. Uh, the anointing always has a purpose. Write that down. The anointing always has a point, a purpose. The power given through the Holy Ghost always has a purpose. And in the text and for us today, the Holy Ghost was equipping them to do their assignment to be a witness. Now let's talk about this for a minute. And I want us to be, I want us to be clear that there's several works of the Holy Ghost. There's several works. We'll come back to this, this point we just had. But there's several works. There's, 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 there's power for purging. There's power for prayer. There's pardoning power, preaching power, praising power, receiving power, personal power, pacifying power. Works of the Holy Ghost. There's many works. The Holy Ghost has several assignments, several responsibilities. Work of the Holy Spirit gives you power to do all these things. And we've talked about the fact that Jesus said, you stay there, the Holy Ghost is coming, and don't move until it's on you. The Holy Spirit is in us, but the power comes on us. Does that make sense? I see some of y'all writing and taking notes. That's why I'm not moving off. I want you to get this. Or so let's talk about that for a minute. The Spirit is with you. The Spirit is in you. And the Spirit is on you. The Holy Spirit has different responsibilities. It's manifested in with you, in you, on you. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right, let's go a little further. Let's go a little further. The work of the Holy Spirit is with you. The Holy Spirit is with us. Watch this before we even say it. The Holy Spirit is with us, and part of his responsibility is prayer is that it would be manifest in the pardoning power to save you. Somebody get Romans 8, 16 for me. The Holy Spirit works to save you. Not saved yet, but the Holy Spirit is with you. He wants you to be saved. Romans 8, 16. Somebody got that? So when we make a decision, the Holy Spirit confirms for us 
that we are part of the kingdom. He works to convict you. The Bible says in Acts 2 37, when they heard this, there was preaching going on. When they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? When we are witnesses, when we are sharing the gospel, it ought to cause somebody's heart. Our prayer is that their heart will be pricked and ask the question, what must I do to be saved? What do I need to do to have Jesus? Where do I need to go to get what you have? It's to work to convict us and then work to cleanse you and me to bring us into the kingdom. <coughs> that same chapter that next verse, 2 verse 38 says, then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit is with us to save us Convict us to cleanse us, and when we receive the Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit is then in us. Does that make sense? With you. So, how is it manifested in you? It's a purging power to cleanse you. Tell somebody you know you're dirty. <laughs> we all need to be cleaned up every so often. Somebody get John 16. I actually want to read verse 7 and 8. John 16, verse 7 and 8. Somebody have that read that for us. <coughs> Nevertheless, mm -hmm. Jesus is saying, I got to go. Keep reading. So if I don't leave, the comforter won't come to you. The Holy Spirit won't show up. Jesus said, if I stay here, the Holy Ghost can't come. Right. So I got to go. Keep reading. But if I leave, I will send the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, to you. Keep reading verse 8. When he shows up, listen, when the Holy Ghost shows up, when the Holy Ghost gets in you, it will purge you of sin, Hallelujah. of unrighteousness, and judgment. Yeah. That's where we get salvation, holiness, and assurance from. He purges us from sin, salvation. He purges us from unrighteousness, holiness. And he purges us from judgment, assurance. With us, we accept Christ, he's in us, and then when he's in us, he's trying to cleanse us. If you want to know if you got the Holy Ghost, don't look for me to shout and speak in tongues. See if I start living better. If you want evidence of the Holy Ghost, uh, you should be able to come and be taught. You can't sit under teaching. I got questions. The reality is, if the Holy Spirit is in you, if you are that deep, you should have that much drama. I said, if you're that deep, you should have that much drama. I ain't talking about trouble. We all got trouble. Come on, drop. Some of us like to stay in mess. Some of us like to create mess. I had to be in the life of God. Some of us like to create mess. You can't have the Holy Ghost in you and you be a mess starter. It's difficult for you to have the Holy Ghost and be a liar. Something just ain't right. Something just ain't right. Purges us of sin, 
perfect and right in our righteousness. And then, and then the text says, Holy Spirit will be on you. So we got with, in, and on. We're going to close here. Uh, he said, I'm going to give you power to be witnesses. To do this, it's God work. It's help us with God. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. You still got wrong? Acts 1 8. The Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses. Here it is. When the Holy Ghost is on you, it's to use you. The disciples were receiving preaching power. They were receiving what they needed to proclaim the word. It made more sense later on. I don't want to get ahead of myself. But that, remember, Jesus just died. Yeah. And there was controversy about whether or not he got up. Right. And the Sanhedrin were really upset because they thought they had it. Right. Yeah, yeah. So here's Jesus. I'm alive. Go tell him I'm still living. <laughs> so they had to go face opposition and proclaim a word that Jesus is still alive. That was not going to make everybody happy. Uh, Let's be practical about this. Don't be people about it. There were people that were angry with Jesus, killed Jesus, was happy he was in the grave, and Jesus told the disciples, tell them I'm still alive. Uh, yeah. Thought you had me? <laughs> they had to go to some, some churches, synagogues, temples, street corners, and tell them, what they say it ain't true, Jesus is still alive and doing well. He got up out the grave just like he said he would. They had to face opposition. He had to, had to face every one of them that said Jesus wasn't no good. They had to go and face every one of them that said Jesus was worthless and should have been killed. They had to go tell them the same ones that said, nope, he's still in the grave. Playing with it, somebody stole his body. I was probably trying to run up tricks. Imagine what the disciples had. Imagine that assignment. Imagine that assignment. You gotta go back to the same people that was. Now listen, if they killed Jesus, I need to make. I need to make this picture. I need to understand why it's important to have the Holy Ghost on you. So you can do what you think can't be done. If they killed Jesus, who am I? If they did it to him, what makes you think they won't? And the Lord's saying, I'm deputizing you and assigning you to go be a witness. Go to the same court they convicted me of and tell them I'm still living. Go to the same judgment hall that they judge me unrighteously and tell them I'm still alive. Can you go back to the same people that hurt you and be a witness? Can you go to the same people that talk about you and tell them how good the Lord has been to you? Y'all be honest. I need some help to do that. Y'all talk about me. Y'all persecuted me. Y'all ran my name in the mud, and the Lord wants me to not only pray for you, but he wants me to come and preach to you. Y'all don't get up. Listen, I don't think you understand the gravity of your assignment, which means I don't care what people did to you, you still have an obligation to go back and tell them how good the Lord is. I know you hurt me, but the Lord helped me. Your foot school until you start walking towards it. Can't make your foot school until you pick up your feet and start being obedient. Yeah. Some of y'all just want to stand, but you want to walk. In order to be able to stand, you got to face it. You got to address it, and you got to be obedient to what the Lord says to you. I wish I had some help in here. Because you preach your power. Do me a favor, just tell somebody, Lord, help me do some stuff I didn't think I could do. Holy Ghost. 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 Holy Ghost.
you have anything to motivate you to do what you know you're supposed to do? Do you not have any motivation to help you do what you tell other people to do? Listen, and after they sat, I said, you know what, Dad, right now, I really don't have motivation. Here it is. Sometimes you do the Lord's work. Kingdom business with carnal means. Yes. Yes. Are people falling away? 
away quick. Leave your ministry you're supposed to be in because the Lord's trying to grow you. Quick, start your own ministry so you don't have no accountability. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes the Holy Ghost will lead you into the fire. The Holy Ghost will lead you into a trap. Ask Joseph about it. Ask David about it. Yeah. I anointed you to be king, but you gotta go through some stuff. And I'm like, listen, yeah, you know I walk through the valley of the shadow like that. But I hear no evil plot because he's with me. You can't walk through your valley unless the Holy Ghost is leading you. You can see the shadow of death and won't run. Because the Holy Ghost is with me, the Holy Ghost is in me, and the Holy Ghost is on me. Somebody give God praise for the word of God.